guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we will take a look at some new Pori Wench content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, Accidental Revenge Slash Karma. My boss stopped paying me. When I asked for an extension on my rent from our shared landlord, he was evicted. Sometime last decade I moved to a new state after several years of being a hobo vagrant hippie with the intent to start a new chapter built on responsibility and normality. I found a cheap apartment, but a week after moving there at a rip-off rate, the ceiling exploded with water because of an upstairs leak. I'd found a job on Craigslist working for a construction contractor, and when I told him about my housing issues, he said his landlord has a place I can rent. The place was a one-room shack with a majorly unfinished bathroom. I showered with a water hose through the window for $1.500 a month. Not great, but an upgrade from a tent. It was right behind the landlord's house and right beside my boss's small, two-bedroom kind of tiny house in much better condition. I happily lived there and slowly worked on improving the place over the course of the next few months. I got to know the landlord well and helped her out a lot with various things, and it was overall pretty nice. But then one week Bosman said he can pay me because an investment he'd made had gone way downhill, but he'll pay me everything when we finish our current job next week. Nothing I hadn't been through before. Then the next week comes and he still can't pay me for another 60 or week. I tell him I gotta buy some food. He gives me cans of corn and beans from his cabinet. Okay. Another week and he still can't pay me. Now, I'm upset and I tell him as much. Tell him I gotta pay right now, and he still hasn't paid me any of the thousands he owes me. He comes back with you're being super ungrateful. I got you this place to live and I've been a good boss. You're an a-hole, and you know what prick, if you come at me like this again, you can pack your crap and leave. But for now, I'll pay to rent for you. So don't worry about that and I'll pay you when I pay you. Well, since I had gotten to be on good terms with the landlord, I thought I'd just ask her for an extension on rent this month while I look for another job. If she said yes, I'd ask my boss for the rent money he was going to pay her. So, when she gets home from work, I tell her, hey, I hate to ask, but could I have an extension on my rent this month? Boss hasn't been able to pay me the last few weeks, and so I need to get a new gig, and I'd also like to keep some money to buy food. She got so ducking upset, it was awesome. Her response was almost verbatim, what the duck? That ducking a-hole, he's always been a selfish dick. You go tell him to get his crap out and move because you're moving into his place and he can sleep on the street for all I care. I told her that wasn't necessary and all but she marched over and argued with him for an hour. At the end he came to my place, gave me $600, and then left. A few days later he came back, packed up and moved out. I got a new better job and rented his furnished, nice little place at a reduced rate. Next one is titled, I am the law. I got a ticket for unsafe lane change. If you don't know what that means, it means I was going the speed limit, put my turn signal on and changed lanes, in front of a cop who was speeding. Yes, I got a ticket because I prevented a cop from breaking the law. In fact, the first thing he said to me was thanks for making my stuff fly everywhere. Really officer unorganized, your stuff. Were you playing Jenga in the passenger seat? Did I destroy all the work you put in to get that giant ship into the tiny little bottle? I expected he'd take my information checked that I had a spotless record, and let me move on. He did not. He came right back with a ticket. When I realized I'd already lost, I began asking him questions, everything I could think of. For 27 minutes, I talked about car insurance and accident forgiveness and right of way. Why? The reason he gave me the ticket was because he was upset that I slowed him down. So I slowed him down even more. For 27 minutes, I successfully detained a police officer. Next one is titled, Delivery driver wouldn't walk up small flight of stairs to deliver items, so I made him walk further. I'm in the UK and live in a small block of flats, so most delivery drivers can't be arsed to walk up the stairs to drop things at front doors, so they just dump them in the stairwell. I totally get it's a pain, but we keep getting stuff stolen as anyone walking past can grab stuff, so there's a big sign asking people not to leave items there as it's not safe slash secure. So there's the same driver from one company that just dumps the items there regardless, they have to take pictures to prove it got delivered, and in the back of the photo, you can even see the sign saying please don't leave them there. 
So anyway, the petty part is I can choose to get items delivered to my home or to a local store for collection. So I've now started doing sending them to a store I shop in weekly. It's the same driver. The app says who was driving for them to be rated. But instead of a short flight of stairs, he now needs to find somewhere to park. Go to a good inn's area. Go through the faff of booking in a parcel with an actual person that'll take way longer and more energy than climbing a flight of stairs. It's petty but A, duck him and B. My parcels are no longer at risk of being stolen. Next one is titled. Beep, beep. Under the bus you go. Okay, this is a tale that was related to me by a friend of mine. Bob, I took notes and got the details. But since Bob doesn't have a Reddit account, I got his permission to post it here. Bob has read this and verified it. Bob was a back of store lead hand for a retail store. Along with his colleague Larry, he made sure that shipments and deliveries were scheduled and handled correctly that the crew out back were doing their jobs, and that the restocks for front of store were picked correctly. His assistant manager, M. Frank, had resigned, and Bob had applied for the job. Bob had been handling many of the Frank's duties, particularly those that involved computers, since Frank was older and not very adept with a keyboard and mouse. Bob didn't get the job. Instead, they brought in Richard, an A.M. from another store, and Bob had worked with him in the past. He was a jerk, and had once thrown Bob under the bus for one of his own mistakes, causing Bob to get yelled at on the floor in front of his colleagues, then hauled into the manager's office to get written up. Bob was thinking of quitting anyway, but getting turned down for the AM position, and then seeing Richard roll in, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. One thing that pertinent is that Larry, his colleague, was a Harley-riding biker type. He wasn't a member of a club, but enjoyed riding and did charity rides and stuff like that. He also, every year for a decade, went to Sturgis, South Dakota, for the annual rally in August. So Bob decided to submit his resignation, effective the day after Larry left for his trip. He did this by attaching a PDF of his resignation to a bunch of reports and requested a read receipt. Bingo. Richard clicked read and Bob printed it out. The schedule for the warehouse crew was posted online, on a web-based scheduling app, with the admin account under assistant manager at store.com. This was store policy. All emails were created as job title at, and when a person left the position, the password was changed. This way, nobody had to change their contact information. They were communicating with the job title and not the individual. IT had a list of logins for every position and changed passwords with every transition, so the outgoing person couldn't sabotage things. Bob had asked Richard repeatedly for his password to the scheduling site and never got an answer. So, Larry worked a Thursday and headed out. Bob worked Friday, his last day, and before he left, he told his crew to make certain they checked the scheduling app and worked their scheduled hours. Then he went home and shut off his work phone. On the Monday before opening, he showed up to turn in his phone and his keys to be greeted by Richard losing his crap. The store manager corralled both of them and took them to his office. Richard went on a tear, describing the crap show that happened over the weekend how Bob was incommunicado. Richard had to come in and piss on fires and demanded that Bob be written up. Bob let him go on and on. The store manager said, Bob, what have you got to say about this? Well, a write-up is a disciplinary action for an employee, right? Yes. It's going to be hard to make that stick since I'm not an employee. Bob had a folder and pulled out a printed copy of his resignation, showing that the previous Friday was his last day. The store manager read it, then handed it to Richard. Richard said, you never sent this to me. Yes, I did, three weeks ago. Here's a copy of the email and here's a copy of the read receipt. The store manager gave Richard a wilting stare. So what have you got lined up to replace Bob? Have you been interviewing? I didn't get this email. This is fake. No, I haven't been interviewing anyone. I guess Larry will have to cover until I can fill that position. Bob? Yeah, good luck with that. Larry isn't even in this time zone. He's in Sturgis, and no, it's not fake. If you want, IT can verify that by checking your email history. Richard turned white. He realized he had no supervisors for the doc, at all. The store manager asked Bob, is there any way we can get you to stick around? No thanks, I've already lined up a new job, sorry. But you've got bigger problems than this. SM, like what, Bob, pulled out more copies of emails and handed them over. I asked Richard repeatedly for his password to the scheduling app, several times. Can I jump on your computer for a second? SM turned his laptop to face Bob 
and Bob logged into the scheduling app. Okay, so the admin account is under Richard's job title. This is where we post the schedule for the crew. I used to do it for Frank because he wasn't a computer guy, but technically, this falls under the assistant manager role. The login is assistant manager at. I'm logged in under my own account, but I can still see who's scheduled across the board. I just can't edit it. I don't have the permissions. Here's the schedule for the warehouse crew for the next two weeks. He turned the laptop back around. It's blank. There isn't anyone scheduled to work at all. Bob turned to Richard. Here's my keys and here's my company phone. I'm done. By the way, in accordance with this email from IT, I factory reset the phone. Good luck. Bob left the office and all the way out of the store, he could hear the manager yelling at Richard. Apparently, Richard had to go into the personnel file and burn up the phone lines, calling warehouse guys to come in at the last minute. And company policy was that if you were called in with less than 24 hours notice, it was time and a half. Many of the records were outdated, so if he reached a worker he had to ask them if he had any of their co-workers' members. Once he got things straightened out a bit he was shown the door. They brought a lead hand and an assistant manager in from another store. Richard was fired for cause, denying him unemployment and tagged with a do not rehire. Last one is titled, How I Messed Up My Nasty Neighbor's Marriage. My mother and I moved back to Germany for a year after her and my dad split up. She had been a housewife for most of their marriage, and even quit university because she got pregnant with me and my father, who was quite a bit older, had a good job and was able to support her well. So we moved back to Germany and stayed at my aunt's. My mother didn't have many qualifications but she did courses at night and worked during the day to take care of me and I'm proud of her. I also didn't want to be too much of a burden on her and I like to be independent so I took up small jobs like babysitting. One of our neighbors who were good friends of my aunt and quite well off would pay me quite a lot to mind their kids. I almost became like a cheap nanny and would spend some weekends just minding them all day. While I liked getting paid and the children were lovely, I really didn't like the couple. See my mother is German and my dad is Jamaican. A mixing this couple didn't approve of and the wife would occasionally say offensive things in a roundabout way about me being half Jamaican or my dad. Like if I made a mistake she would say I need to listen to my native half, meaning German. She later changed it to brighter sense it was too on the nose. She would also take digs at my mother in the most passive-aggressive ways. Always going on about her PhD and being a professor and how she's glad her life didn't get sidetracked by bad influences, meaning my mother ending up with a Jamaican. It was constantly like this and worse. I think it bothered me more than it bothered my mother who never let what others said get to her. Now the husband. Well, where do I start? He would always eye me. Like constantly staring at me and mentally undressing me. I tried to ignore it for the most part, but I knew his wife sometimes caught it and it pissed her off, which made me sort of like it. He would always say suggestive things and I'm pretty sure that he paid me far more than they normally would and that pissed her off even more. I'm pretty sure, if it weren't for him, she would have fired me but he's clearly the dominant of the two. I did think of quitting as well, but they had a niece who would visit often and she was about my age and we got along well. So really I kept on good terms with the family because they were my neighbors and paid well, but mostly because of their niece. But when my mother announced we were leaving Germany again because she got an opportunity abroad, the husband started to get a bit more aggressively suggestive and his wife got nastier and I was starting to get more pissed off. Her husband started following and interacting with my social media more. He would also send me memes which would turn into text messages that went on late. I feel bad because I indulged it partly because I was afraid and didn't want to rock the boat and partly because I knew it was pissing off his wife. He accidentally sent me a pic with him topless in towel once then immediately said it was for his wife. One day I was in their pool with their niece. The husband joined us and while play fighting in the water, he came up behind accidentally, slid his hands under my bikini top and copped a feel. At this stage I told myself I was going to do something to get them back before we left Germany. At dinner that night with him, his wife and my family, I joked about a watered-down version of the pool incident at the dinner table. Everyone thought it was just an off comment and laughed it off. But he went very quiet and I could tell despite laughing, his wife wanted to kill him with her eyes. Me and their niece got into an argument after because she said my joke was inappropriate and I said that her uncle was inappropriate kind of tongue in cheek, but also not really. It's not like I had proof either because I deleted all his messages. After that we weren't as close anymore. 
You'd think this incident would have stopped my neighbor from being suggestive, but he only got worse and would openly say things like, let me squeeze, but as a joke. On my last day babysitting while the kids were asleep, I stayed in their pool with their niece. The husband came out and sent her off to a local shop to get something for him saying he had a bad back. Yeah, right? He just wanted to be alone with me. He got in pool and started play fighting in the water again. I got out for a few minutes and while upstairs saw his wife cycling towards the house and straight away, I got an awful idea, but right then didn't care. I ran back for the pool and took off my bikini top. I told him is that what you were waiting for then? And he grinned like an idiot. I jumped in the water and waited till the very last moment before letting him reach me I asked to get on his shoulders and he led me on. In mere seconds his wife walked out into the back garden seeing me on his shoulders topless. She was speechless and paler than pale. He froze and when she managed to finally say something he lied, saying the straps off my top must have come off and he didn't notice. But I just said in laughing voice that we were just playing. Without saying a word his wife just turned and walked back into the house. He got out of the pool and went after her. He didn't say much at all to me after and paid me five times the amount saying to just forget the pool. That was the last day that I saw that man. After moving I learned from my aunt that shortly after we left the couple went into marriage counseling which according to her was weird because they were the perfect power couple of the neighborhood and were the backbone of the community, never having major issues. I feel sort of bad for it because of the kids and that I escalated things too far. But honestly a part of me says duck that couple. I haven't told my mother all this yet, not because she'd be angry with me, but because she'd be upset that I went through this alone. Thanks for listening.